My name is Thomas Rickert, and I'm one of the three co-chairs of the CCWG, the Cross-Community Working Group on Enhancing ICANN's Accountability, and I'm the co-chair that has been appointed by the GNSO, the Generic Name Supporting Organization. And today I'm going to show you th through some of the high-level principles that we've been working on in the CCWG. On the screen in front of you, you see four building blocks, and we think that we can build a robust accountability architecture out of these four components, which are at the upper left side of the screen, the community, which would be the equivalent to the people or the legislative in the government or in the state. We would have the executive, which would be the ICANN board. At the lower left side, you would have principles, which would be the equivalent to a constitution. And at the lower right hand side, you would find an independent appeals mechanism which would be the equivalent to a judiciary. So we thought that we can have checks and balances and the division of powers as you would have in states. We have been tasked with looking at ways to replace the historical relationship between ICANN slash IANA and the US government. And we thought it would be a good idea to take the power that the US government had and give it to the community. And hence, we came up with the concept of an empowered community where you would have certain powers exercised in a legal vehicle where SOs and ACs would have certain voting powers. And according to our current thinking, the SOs and ACs, except for RSEC and ESSEC, would have five votes, and RSEC and ESSEC would have two votes. Now, what are these community powers that we've worked on? And according to our current thinking, it would be the power to um, to veto or ask for uh, a review of the budget, uh, a strategic plan and an operating plan, the power to ask for reconsideration or reject standard bylaws, uh, the power to approve changes to fundamental bylaws, and the powers to remove individual board directors or to recall the complete ICANN board. What the community needs is a last resort power to replace individual directors or to dismiss the entire board in case there are wrongdoings. And we've been working on escalation mechanisms, escalation paths for these uh, community powers. So if there is an issue, then for individual directors, the SOs and ACs that have placed board members on the ICANN board have the power to remove them for those board members that have been placed on the ICANN board by the nominating committee, we're still discussing whether the removal should be done by the then um, uh, functioning NOMCOM or whether there should be a special recall NOMCOM that would remove um, members from the ICANN board. And for the removal of the whole board, for the re recalling of the whole board, we would have a community mechanism whereby you would need at least three SOs and ACs, one from each group that would then deliberate in their own um, communities, and we would then need a 75% vote for the board to be recalled. Today, the ICANN board can make decisions to amend or change the bylaws. And there have been some in the community that were afraid that we are working on improvements to ICANN's accountability, but that are worried that some future board could just reverse those uh, enhancements to ICANN's accountability. And that is why we came up with the idea of having two different sets of rules in ICANN's bylaws. That would be standard or normal bylaws and so-called fundamental bylaws, where we have a different process to getting those amended. So we, will, we wanted to have certain aspects of the bylaws harder to change. We wanted to make them more robust. At the same time, we wanted to allow for certain flexibility because, as we all know, ICANN is working in a rapidly changing environment and it might need to change its mission or make other changes to the bylaws. So according to our current thinking, we would put certain aspects into the bylaws as fundamental bylaws, and these would be the mission, the commitments and core values, the independent review process, uh, the 
possibility to impact or to influence bylaw changes uh, as such, i.e. to approve fundamental bylaws or to veto uh, normal bylaw changes. And we would put in there certain reviews, such as the reviews requested by the parallel cross-community working group, the CWG, for example, the IANA functions review. And we would also put the new community powers into the fundamental bylaws so that they can't easily be changed. And the process behind it, just to, um, to, to summarize, would be that where normal bylaws are concerned, these would be approved by the board after a consultation process with the community. And the community could then veto such changes or ask for reconsideration while for fundamental bylaws, explicit approval by the community would be required. ICANN already has an independent uh, review process, but the issue with it was, and that, that caused con some concerns in the community, that this process would only be able to look at procedural flaws. And we wanted to enhance the independent review process by making the decisions binding for the ICANN board. There are a few exceptions for, for a very, very limited number of cases, but in principle, the decisions should be binding, they should be final, they should uh, create precedent, and they should be truly independent. Decisions would be made by a standing panel of seven panelists, out of which one or three panelists would be picked for individual cases. So aggrieved parties should have the opportunity to challenge actions taken by the ICANN board or ICANN staff in order to have them checked against ICANN's mission, commitments, and core values. And then a decision is being made, and this decision would be binding. And we want to make sure that this process can not too easily be invoked in order to avoid vexatious complaints, but at the same time, it should be accessible. So there should be relatively low cost for invoking that procedure, and also decisions should be made in a timely fashion. This has been just a very quick overview of an in-depth report that our group came up with. And please do note that these recommendations are not consensus recommendations, even more. On some areas, we've put out different options for the community to comment on. So I hope that you are now interested in looking at our interim work results in more detail. You find the report on ICANN's website. You also find more graphics that help illustrate and facilitate understanding of our interim work results. And we do hope that you will chime in. We, have, we are relying on you as a community member to guide us. Are we moving into the right direction? Uh, do we need to rectify or consider different things so that we can come up with a set of consensus recommendations in a very short period of time? Thank you.